You guys know that I don't really pay attention to internet drama, in particular Facebook. As a matter of fact, you guys may not know this, I don't even have a Facebook page, a personal Facebook page. Yes, we have our business Facebook page, but I don't even have a personal Facebook page, so I never log on to Facebook because it's so vitriolic. Really, all the internet is a little bit of a troll type of thing, and I try not to pay attention to it, but part of my living is, of course, social media, so I have to somewhat have thick skin. But recently, there's been a few things that have been said about me that are picking up a little bit of momentum, so I felt that I had to address that. Hi, Javi. How are yeah. Well, recently there's actually been a handful of things being said about the fact that like I'm a con artist. I'm trying to con people out of money to kind of promote my business. You know, obviously I've been very honest about what happened and the fact that we had the aquarium completely fully funded before my diagnosis and we now we're in a position where we needed help and you guys have helped a lot. A lot of people have really been very, very gracious to me. But I heard some people say, listen, you know, you're begging for money, you're just conning people out of money. And then you're spending money on things like Javi, the beautiful capybara who I love to death. And by the way, before I move on to the thing I wanted to say. I realized that capybaras are group animals. They like to be in groups. But we talked to a ton of people that keep capybaras you know, and breed them and stuff like that, including Blake. Blake's exotic. I got look at him. He's eating me so darn And cute. actually, if you keep them separate, you just have to spend a lot of time with them because you become their group, right? You know, basically, you're part of their group and they come to you. And that's why Javi now comes to me and climbs up on my lap and he does it to all of our animal educators. So we spend a number of hours every single day in this enclosure. But back to what I was saying about the fact that, like, I'm raising money. People are saying, like, oh my gosh, you're raising all this money and then you're buying animals for yourself. That's just so wrong. What you have to remember is that this is part of the expansion. Right from the beginning, when I talked about the aquarium, I said I wanted to have four or five mammals on display, right? Obviously, Javi's not on display right now because the aquarium's been done. He's going to actually have a beautiful enclosure that I told you he's going to be in with Matilda. Water, you know, crazy. I mean, it's going to be absolutely amazing for this animal. And that's part of it. When I did the budget for the aquarium, part of the budget was buying some mammals. Buying an African crested porcupine, buying a capybara, buying a couple other mammals. Really, like, it was weird for me to be like, you know, well, what do you think? I'm going to build the aquarium and not have animals in there? So when people kind of were attacking me, like, I can't believe you're begging for money and then you're buying pets and stuff like that. Yo, know, listen, I love this guy to death. I mean, he is absolutely wonderful. You could say he's my pet. You know, every animal in my place is my pet. And some say it's because I love him all so much. But I didn't buy Javi. For me personally, I bought Javi to interact with people. So really, again, you know, am I affected by this? No, but I wanted to kind of squash it in the beginning and say, like, come on, guys. I'm not trying to con anyone out of any money. If people want to support us and help us fulfill this kind of legacy aquarium great if you don't want to you don't have to and I really do appreciate everyone that has done it and there's been so many people that have been such a blessing and you guys are making this dream become a reality such a good boy next one there's been some controversy with the website morph market if you guys haven't heard about it I'm going to talk about it a little bit more in a second but it's basically like a classified place where people can buy all animals and stuff like that and it's been kind of controversial lately because people are starting to get banned and there's even been some uprisings like Kevin McCurley at nerd there were some people saying that he should be banned for this reason or that reason and then there's some people now saying that I should be banned from Mark market again it's bizarre when you start to get people like you know making things up so that they can just uh, create controversy basically and basically morph market is uh, a little bit like I hate to use the term Craigslist for reptiles or stuff like that, but it's a little bit like that, right? It's where breeders and, and animal people can post stuff that they have for sale. And Darian, the owner, is a huge supporter of us, which is really great. We've always had great time in Morph Market. We've been a part of it since the very inception. It's really like the industry standard when it comes to finding things. Not only can you find amazing animals, whether it's a ball python, a leopard gecko, or really any reptile, amphibian, spiders, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. But also you can do a bunch of filter stuff, so it's really easy to search. Or if you want something local, now they have a local feed feature that I really like that says like, hey, within a hundred miles. And one of the things that happened with us recently, which is our fault hundred percent, was that our staff posted a leopard gecko picture and basically said, hey, this is available. And they didn't put in the description that this was an example of a leopard gecko that we had. It was a mutation that we had, you know, say 20 or 30 of. And rather than having 20 or 30 individual pictures, we just put one picture up. And then a couple people bought them and it wasn't exactly the same thing as the picture and they were disappointed. Completely our fault. We'll never make that mistake again. But that was another reason why people were like, oh, Brian should be banned or something like that. But more of market is actually a really incredible place for you to find the animal that you want you know and if you do decide to be a breeder or you're selling stuff it's a great place for you to sell as well and Darian is doing a great job of transitioning into a website I think it's going to be really beneficial for the reptile hobby over the next you know 15 20 years he really has a heart for the animal he didn't buy more of market just to buy it he bought it to make the community better and now with all these people trying to get him to ban people that's not helping that community that's just causing more vitriol <laughs> regardless if you want to check it out morphmarket.com it's definitely the creme de la creme when it comes 
to buying and selling animals. Next up is this has been going on for the last little bit and it just blows my mind and it's that I'm an animal abuser, right? And it's been happening to a number of people. My friend Kevin over at Nerd has had it happen to him. And uh, it's just crazy to me. I mean, you know, people that dedicate their life to love of animals, no one that's ever visited my place, whether it be here, BHB or anything else, they could never say I'm an animal abuser. It's just this kind of vitriolic nature of people that are just making things up to try to make it like, oh, Brian's still a bad guy no matter what his situation is because he abuses his animals. Let's face it, guys. I doubt that people that are saying I'm an animal abuser are talking about the Reptarium because you see these giant cages, the naturalistic cages. And a lot of times that's what people had said is that, you know, I was starting to grow, right? You know, and basically what that meant is that I was changing my philosophy on the animals and I was giving them large enclosures. There are things I did in the past that I had learned and tried to do better about it. But I don't think the Reptarium is actually the issue. I think BHB is more the problem and I kind of understand what's going on and it's a lot about keeping reptiles in wrap like a ball python this happens to be a ghost ball python it's a hypo which is a recessive mutation that's wrapped around a beautiful clutch of eggs right now let's take a look at this and she's actually bred to a mimosa pretty small clutch of eggs it's kind of weird only three little eggs by the way look at this this is definitely uh the tiniest egg i've ever found when it comes to a ball python there's no doubt about that and basically you can see you know we're keeping them relatively minimalistic right some people keep bedding some people keep paper we like to keep paper because we clean them constantly and it just makes it a little bit more aesthetically clean but i do get the understanding like people think like oh my gosh that snake keeps its whole life in this tub right and although it's an industry standard you know it I get it, you know, especially for someone that doesn't understand reptiles that much. They may think that's just a boring life for the animal. It doesn't have enrichment. It doesn't have a place to climb. And I'm going to say that I don't completely disagree with that. You know, I've made mention that over the next five years, no matter what happens in my life, we're going to be moving away from rack systems. Now, I'm not going to be against rack systems. I'm going to talk about people that keep things in rack. But what I'm going to say is that I've made a personal decision to slowly make BHB into a more naturalistic thing where all of them are that way. So I kind of understand in a way why people would say, hey, it's animal abuse to keep an animal in a tub and to have it in a minimalistic enclosure it, it's it's a catch-22 do i think it's okay yes i think it's okay do i think that they could use more yes i think they could use more so i think that people kind of reach out and call all these breeders animal abusers because they really don't understand the needs of the animals that being said, some animals aren't good in tubs and some animals are good in tubs when it comes to ball pythons they probably do better in tubs you know we've actually had a bunch of ball pythons that we've moved to the reptarium have big naturalistic enclosure and they've actually stressed out and we've had to take them back off exhibit so you know I, I get it you know and then once i put them back in a tub they do great right so ball pythons like that more confined area they don't roam around as much they don't climb as much but I do understand the whole thing, but at the same time, you sit back and you think a guy that his entire life, I mean, since I was a little kid, all the way till now, has just done things to love animals and do the best for the animal community. To be called an animal abuser is hurtful. It really is. I'm not going to lie to you. I mean, because I would die for any one of these animals. To someone that doesn't even know me, doesn't know my heart, has never been here, never visited my place, hasn't seen how clean and aesthetic we keep every single thing, both reptarium wise and at BHB, and then they would call me an animal abuser. I mean, it is really like saying, like, the polar opposite of what I am. I, I mean, would fight to my death to prove people that I'm not an animal abuser. But that being said, you know, I can't change everyone's opinion, but that is just absolutely ridiculous. Not only me, but guys like Kevin at Nerd and some of these other people that this gets bantered around as animal abusers. It's really ridiculous. I mean, it really is. But at the same time, there is some basis in truth when it comes to the rack system, so I get it. BHB will kind of cycle out of this over the next several years. All right, this, this one is one that actually does upset me. I'm not going to lie to you, and it's hard for me to just kind of brush this one off and I've seen it several times over the last week or so. so if I'm seeing it several times I'm sure it's out there a lot more and it's that I don't actually have cancer and that I'm basically lying to people to try to generate money to try to pay for the aquarium and so like that and that it's a complete farce that I don't have it um you know what Fuck you yeah I actually first off I want to apologize about that that's raw emotion secondly I'm, I'm going to take that back you know what I actually feel bad for you I feel bad that you would actually do that. I mean, what kind of a person has that vitriol in them to accuse someone that literally was diagnosed with terminal cancer, given 12 to 18 months to live, going through treatment that makes me feel terrible most of the time. You guys see me in the vlog. We film the vlog in the morning when I feel the best of the day, but by time about noon rolls around, we're pretty much done filming because we have to get that over. By noon, I'm crashing, and from noon on, I'm feeling terrible. I work as much as I can, but a lot of times I have to go home at 12.30, 1 o'clock, take a nap because I literally have no energy and I feel so terrible, and then I spend the rest of the night at home doing as much as I can, but a lot of times I'm in bed. A lot of times I can barely function. You know, going through this treatment is so so difficult not to mention the emotional damage that it does to me my family my employees my friends you know it is 
unbelievable difficult. If you've never been through cancer or you don't have someone close that has been through cancer, you don't understand. It absolutely destroys your life. Now on this vlog, I try not to talk about it that much. I try to be inspirational. I try to be positive. I try to be up. And I am. Listen, I am very positive. I am in a position where I believe that even though it's a very small percentage that can beat this, I believe that I'm one of them. I think I will come out on the other side. I don't know for sure, but I am believing in that because I think that's the only way you can do it is to believe it because I, you know, are you going to live your life going like, hey, okay, I was diagnosed three and a half months ago and I had 12 to 18 months. Now I only have nine to whatever. No, you're not going to live your life that way. You're going to live your life saying, hey, listen, number one, I'm going to achieve everything I can achieve. I'm going to create moments and memories that I can create. And I'm going to believe that I'm going to get to the other side of this and I'm going to have a long life that I can enjoy. But for people to literally have the audacity to say that I'm lying or I'm cheating, I mean, listen, I've lost 35 pounds and, and I am working my butt off to not lose more. I mean, eating to me is like, I mean, I have to literally force food down my throat because I could easily drop another 20 pounds right now because I don't want to eat ever. I've obviously lost a lot of my hair, you know, and did I go bald yet? No. Will I go bald? I don't know, but you can definitely see my hair is a lot, lot thinner than it was before. I used to have a full, beautiful head of hair. Now I have hair that is whatever all over my body. I've lost hair. I've got sores in my mouth, so it's hard to talk and it's hard to eat. I, like I said, I feel terrible most of the time. I mean, my stomach is constantly giving me problems in one way or another. I mean, there's so many things that are so negative that I don't share with you guys and I don't share with anyone. I just keep it to myself and I go through my day the best I possibly can trying to be an inspiration because I want people to see like, hey, if Brian can go through this with what he's doing and still achieve his goals and do the things he wants to do and I have a migraine today or I have this or I have that, I can maybe do something else. I want to inspire people. But for people to literally say, I am lying about this, it's ridiculous. I mean, it's absolutely, I mean, if, listen, if you really want to know, if you're one of those people saying I'm lying to it, reach out to me personally. I'll send you my my scans, okay, with the tumors in it. I'll send you all my doctor's paperwork so that you can see yourself that this is not a scam. Number one, what person would say that about somebody? But even more so, what person would actually fake it? If you fake that you have cancer, especially as bad as my type of cancer, I wouldn't want to go through the hell I'm going through now. As a matter of fact, I don't know if you guys can see it. This is the port right here. This port right here is where they do chemotherapy. Do you think that I had a port installed into myself just to raise money for the aquarium? I mean, come on guys, you got to remember, I was fully funded. I had all the expenses funded before the diagnosis. Now I still want to achieve that dream and you guys are helping me achieve that dream. And listen, with all the things I talked about today, I'm not going to lose an ounce of sleep over it. The only thing that gets me a little bit mad and I'm a little bit tweaked on is the cancer part. To accuse someone of that is like a horrible, horrible thing to do. The other things, I don't really care. I know I'm not an animal abuser. I know I belong on Morph Market because I provide great animals to people. But all the other things don't matter and I don't even pay attention. Those and I actually hope you guys won't pay attention to them either. When you see someone write something negative about me, ignore them. They want attention. That's the problem. They're so broken as a person. That they're demanding attention or they're looking at me saying like, oh, I want him to be miserable because they're so miserable. You have to have empathy for them. You have to have a, a feeling of sorrow for what they must be going through in their life because they have to be going through so much to say such horrible things about someone that they don't even know. Because like I mentioned before, no one that knows me, no one that's been here, no one that actually has any idea who I am would ever say any of the things that get said about me online. But again, sorry for the rant. I had to go off today and rant and do these type of things because I wanted to set the record straight. Do I care about what people are saying about me? Not really. The only thing that cares about me is the people that truly support me, my friends, my family, my coworkers. You know, that's what matters to me. And I still have the same mission that I will always have, which is educate and get people to love animals. And I'm trying to do it more and more and more with the Legacy Aquarium. So I can promise you I will never retouch this topic again, ever. I needed to clear my mind, get it off my chest, and now I have, and you will never hear this again. And I do appreciate all the people that do go to bat for me because some of you guys are bulldogs. I mean, you guys attack people like it's unbelievable. And I get, a, you know, I'm not going to lie, I get a little bit of enjoyment out of it. So I appreciate you guys. I appreciate everyone else that supports me and everything else it is. I can promise you my, my heart is in the right place. It always has been. It's about the animals, about education. It's about conservation. And I'm going to continue to better myself, just like we did with the reptarian. Yeah. Now we're going to better ourselves with BHB over the next few years, whether I'm around or not, which hopefully I will be to see that. But through. everyone that's at BHB knows the direction we want to go, and we will be going in that direction. Again, that's nothing against the people that keep things in racks. I will never go against that because I've done it the majority of my career. My point is, is that we're continuing to make changes like the new Caledonia room. So that's it, guys. I'm done. I'm done ranting. I love you guys so much. You're so amazing. Thank you for letting me do this. And uh, let me know in the comments what you think. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, there's a playlist that you can watch all kinds of videos. You can also hit that subscription button. It would mean a lot to me. Also, hit that like button while you're down.
down there. Have a wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember, be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you in the next one.